Welcome everybody. Would you like to go on a journey with me on a journey to make a junk journal? This is a very simple and basic tutorial on how to make a junk journal uh, from an old book. This is, I know that there's a lot of people out there who are a little timid about getting started making junk journals. So I wanted to hold your hand and walk you through this together. This is what I call slow crafting. This is not a YouTube short. This is not an Instagram reel. This is the uh, slow process of us doing this together so that you can see every step, learn every tip and every trick along the way. And I'm here to hold your hand through it all and uh, show you that it's not that bad, not that hard, and uh, you can do this too. All right, so are you ready to uh, take a peek? Um, yeah, one of the easiest ways to make a junk journal in the beginning is to use the cover of a book and all you have to do is pick the cover of a book and I found this beautiful book called Heartthrobs. We're coming up on Valentine's Day here 2022 and I thought this red book called Heartthrobs it, it's also had on the bottom it says the old scrapbook. I mean what could ring ring truer to a junk journal maker's heart than uh, these title this title. So it has a beautiful spine. This is volume one and uh, a beautiful back cover. It also, there's something very special about this book I want to show you as well and explain to you. But I'm going to do my best to retain the beautiful red inner leaflet sheet, um, the first page, and this that runs over and is connected here. If I get lucky, it works great. If not, I can work without it. It has beautiful graphics on the inside and it is also filled with lovely um, poems and quotes and very short stories uh, and also some beautiful illustrations. I mean, just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Uh, so I would like to retain some of those, use those in the embellishments uh, and additions and decorations in the book. I just think it would be a great way to honor this book. Um, now, there's something else that's special about this book. This particular book was um, published in 1904-1905 by a company called The National Magazine, and it was contributed all the different poems, short stories, uh, uh, things like that, were contributed by over 50,000 people. It was a contest to, uh, in prose and verse, dear to the American people, and by them contributed in the $10,000 prize contest initiated by the National Magazine. And they wrote this letter, and I just thought it was a very interesting uh, letter I wanted to share with you. It was written on August 31st, 1905. Um, it gives me great pleasure to announce to you that the National Magazine has awarded you one of the 840 prizes for your heartthrob contribution. Heartily congratulating you upon your success. I am yours sincerely. Um, Mr. So-and-so can't read his writing. Uh, the above award has been submitted and approved respectfully. Okay, so there we go. So I don't know if this particular copy was uh, somebody who won and this was their copy um, showing that they won and it was their, maybe their poem was in here or this is on everybody's. I am not sure, uh, but it does have an interesting number up here. I have no idea what that means. Uh, maybe it's in reference to the particular item that they submitted. That's a possibility. Uh, but I think that um, it's a very, very interesting concept. Uh, now, the next few pages, I won't read these for you, but basically it explains how this person, this company will give $10,000 for heartthrobs. And they describe heartthrobs as, yes, heartthrobs of happiness, heartthrobs of courage, heartthrobs that make us feel better. Those things that appeal to you must appeal to others. That note of inspiration laid aside, bring it forth. Let us make a magazine that will speak the language of the heart as well as of the mind. So there you go. I want you to send in your clippings showing you what me what kind of stories interest you, your mothers, sisters, brothers, and daughters. I want you to um, know just what kind of a short, pithy article uh, would you select if you were sitting here at my editorial desk. I have placed on deposit at the First National Bank, $10,000. This money to, now this is interesting. I just have to share this with you. This money will be held in trust until the time specified below, when it will be divided among those who help me. To 10 persons sending in the best clippings, I will give each one uh, a pile of silver dollars as high as each successful contestant. 
That is, if you secure one of the first 10 awards and measure six feet high or four feet five, I will send by express as many silver dollars as will measure your exact height. One silver dollar placed flat upon the other. Um, and then it explains how the other awards will be given out. But I just thought that was sort of an interesting little anecdote here in this. this. So sometimes it's fun to take a moment to get to know the book that you're going to be uh, creating into a new journal and uh, get the feel for the book and where the book has... Um, uh, you know what it had, what its purpose was, what who the author was, what it was like. It's a, it's a sense of actually honoring the old book. Um, some people have a difficult time cutting up old books. Um, not me. I am over that now. <laughs> But uh, if you want to just watch, that's okay. If it hurts your eyes and you need to turn away, I completely understand. What is that, Sunny? You have something to say? Yes, I have something to say, and it's very important right now. What? Oh, okay. It, it wouldn't have to have anything to do with the fact that. Uh, let me tell him, Mom. Let me tell him. Let me tell him. Hello, everybody. I had a bath. Yes, I had a bath. I had a bubble bath. I was actually a shower. And it was a combo. Dad showered, mom towel dried and blow dried. It was heavenly. Although I resisted greatly in the beginning, I realized it was wonderful once it was all over. I smell great. Thank you, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much, son, for that bath update. Anytime, mom. Anytime. Okay. So, as I can tell you, it's going to be slow. We're going to do this slowly, and I'm going to try and keep these to about 30 minutes. So we'll get as far as we can each time. There will be no big rush or anything like that. But I want to tell you all the little nuances as we go. So now this particular book, you can use an older book or a newer book. It doesn't matter. But um, this particular kind of book where the spine is away, it is not glued down to the, uh, the text block um, or the, the pages block, is easier to remove. Just saying. Good tip out there. If you buy the kind, and a lot of the newer books are like this, where all these papers are actually glued to the spine, it's a lot harder to take apart. So if you want to be easy and gentle on yourself, especially in the beginning, maybe pick a book that does that. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So you can do this many different ways. Um, my preference is using a craft knife. And uh, it's always best if you start with a sharp blade, but this is this book is already ready to give up its goods, so I don't think I'm going to need too sharp of a blade. If I have any difficulty, I will switch it out. And here we go. Um, and there's many ways to do this too, but basically you're just trying to separate the back from the front. And I'd like to save these inner car pieces if I can. If I can get them to stay with the cover, great. If not, I can always add them in after. I can do different things. Okay, see this book, it's already coming apart there. You see that? So I'm just going to, I'm going to take this blade and I'm going to tilt it towards the text block, okay? So I'm not cutting into the spine because I want to maintain the spine. It's very easy to nick the spine. You can also, this has never really worked for me, but I am going to mention it because others mention it, so they must work for them. Uh, actually, it might be easier with this book because you can get this in here, but you can, t if you have a ruler that's not too big, you can slide it in here to protect your spine whilst cutting. Maybe I'll try it. Okay, I'm, I'm staying open-minded. Here I am, open-minded. All right, I think it's gonna work well with this book. Okay, so now we're just gonna cut, taking the blade. Can you see well? Very, okay, you gotta, it, it's a very important to see this. Put your glasses on for this. I think it's just gonna, it's just tearing. Oh, I gotta just do it with my hands. It's so easy to come out. <laughs> it's like silly easy to come out. A lot of books are harder to get apart than that. It's not always that easy. But um, did I get that front page still stuck on? Yeah, okay, so that beautiful red page is still adhered to the front. Okay, now let's just go and do the back. And I wanna be careful not to tear this. Can you see? Okay, oops, hang on, I'm just gonna readjust my light. Okay. All right, here we go. Just keep it, don't cut your fingers. All right, there we go. I mean, that was it. The book, the, co the cover is off, okay? And this cover has lasted over 100 years. So even though it's thin and frail, it still survived. So just take that note to heart. It survived whatever humidity and whatever whatnot. And here you can take a look at the way the book was bound originally. It has some mesh over some glue, which was uh, uh, holding together all the signatures together. So that is how this book was put together. I don't believe there are any strings. 
There might be. Now yeah, let's take a look in here. It's always a good way to tell. I think there are strings. There are strings holding this book together. By the age of this book, that would make sense. So they bound this book together also with strings, with book binding strings. So we're going to put this block aside because we're not going to be using it immediately. Off you go. And what we're going to do is a very simple, the first thing, we're going to retract the craft knife. There we go. That will save you many woes. You won't drop it on the dog or on your toe when the phone rings and you have to jump off and get it. No, no, no. Um, okay, so I have my inner flap. Oh, did I lose the, f I think I lost the back page. I did, look at that, see, it happens. You know what we'll do? We'll, we will, we'll just know that it's there and I can always get it later. That's what we'll do, yes. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's all good. Now. Um, the first thing I'm going to do with this particular, uh, let me see something. I'm just deciding whether I should take this page out. Maybe I should, because I think I'm going to have a better adherence for my, um, oh, here we go. And she's using her, she's not even cutting it. She's just tear, there. Now it matches. Um, reason being, I want to reinforce my spine and I don't want to have anything that's going to cause a problem here right on the edges. So um, this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, I'm going to reinforce the spine. The spine is very weak. It could be easily torn by the hands, even though it's lasted that many years. But I'm going to use Tyvek tape. You don't need to use Tyvek tape. Tyvek tape is a strong tape made by DuPont um, to seal together pieces of drywall and uh, you know, underneath the outside of your house. Tyvek tape is used a lot to hold things together. It's a very good weatherproof tape, very strong. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a very strong tape. Okay. Um, if you don't have Tyvek tape, you can use um, masking tape. You can use duct tape. Uh, you can also just use fabric. So um, all of those will give you tensile strength across the bridge of the spine so that these pieces, one, two, three, hold together and don't come apart from each other. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm, this is the hardest part, getting the tape started. Okay, whoops. And, and you can buy this stuff on um, Amazon or eBay. I think I have a link to it in my store. If you really want this stuff, it's great if you make a lot of journals. Um, it's absolutely not necessary. It's overkill, but I really like to use it. Um, if you, it does have a shiny side. And if you want to rough that up with a sanding block or a sanding sponge, that's great as well because that will allow your glues and things like that to adhere better. It'll have some tooth to grab to, but it's also not mandatory. It's just a nice little extra step for security if you feel so inclined. Oop, okay. Now that happens sometimes. Yes. <laughs> ah, sometimes it's hard to get a straight piece. So maybe get the piece of the length that you want. And I'm going to take it down about... Hmm. Do I need, I need to maybe do two of these so I can cross the middle. Okay, here we go. Where's my scissors? Here they are. All right, I'm just gonna cut a piece that's a little shorter than the north and a little shorter than the south end. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put these extra pieces over here because I might use them somewhere along the way. Okay, now I like to measure the piece and cut it and then lay it down. It's just a little easier, cleaner. And it doesn't have to go all the way to the north and the south, but I would say approximately cover 80% of the book and you should be fine. Now I could go across here. I'm just going to get a little on that side and a little on this side, but really I want to, um, I'm going to use two pieces so I get a wider spread. That gives me more security that my, uh, uh, my spine will stay very well attached to my covers. Okay, there we go. All right, reinforcing this old beauty. All right, same thing over here, same process. And I'm just going to double it up a little bit. Okay, about to there. Measuring. Now, the Tyvek tape is very strong tape, so don't touch it to itself or you're going to be getting another piece of tape out. You know what I mean? Okay, there we go. And uh, here we go. I'm just overlaying. Trying doing about the same amount. I would say I've got about, oh, half an inch or so. Oh, oh okay on either side of this. And it probably went a little too far north there. So let me just take this and make it shorter because sometimes we have to adjust as we go. You know, even with the best, best laid plans of mice and men, sometimes we go awry. That happens a lot, especially when you're not a classic measurer like myself. And I just like to um, uh, put it down and figure it out from there. So there's going to be a lot of that in this process. Very slow and easy process. Okay. 
So next, as we advance through um, uh, the stages of making a junk journal. Now, believe it or not, just with that tape in place, we have a very strong book at this point. This spine is not going to come apart from these uh, covers. Okay, that's very, very strong right there. Now we're going to add one more layer to give it um, decor and also more strength. We're going to add fabric. And I like to use fabric that is uh, muslin or muslin thickness, like a very thin fabric. And um, it can be a coordinating fabric, it can be a contrasting fabric, whatever you like. Um, pick something that, you know, tickles your fancy and then uh, go ahead and just put it down. You can put it on the, the uh, intense side up or you can put it on the underside and have it look like a more old fashioned um, design because of that. What is helpful with this particular design is that it masks the fact that there's the blue words of Tyvek against the white. If you have a problem with that, you can always, um, uh, you can paint this with gesso. You can uh, rub it up, rough it up with this so the gesso will have something to grab to. Or you can actually glue a piece of white paper right over that and that will handle that for you as well. So if you have those issues, just make sure you apply. Fabrifix glue would be a very good glue to use if you've never seen that. Let me just show you the bottle. Um, that's a great, uh, very strong, very quick grabbing, clear silicone glue, paper to paper paper to fabric and fabric to fabric. Okay, I'm just taking my sweater. It got a little warm in here with my heater. Okay, um, so now we are going to, and you can, you can come along with me like as we do our books together. Uh, I'm gonna try and slow down a little bit so I don't do it so fast so that um, I run off like a little rabbit in the, uh, you know, in the forest and you're like, wait, what'd she do? Where'd she do go? And you have to rerun, rerun, rewind a thousand times. No, we're gonna just slow down. Um, slow crafting. Okay, so this width, needs to be wider than the outsides of your tape or your reinforcement or your masking tape or your duct tape or your other piece of fabric in here, okay? And if you did glue fabric in here, use a very strong fabric glue um, that will give you the best adherence. Other glues will work. You can also use a wet white glue. You may get some bleed through, but you're gonna put another fabric on top of it so it really doesn't matter. You don't actually have to put the second piece of fabric if you're gonna use the first. It's just an extra layer of protection for your spine but if, if you just use this first that would be fine but then your strength is dependent on the, the tensile strength of your muslin if it's a piece of vintage muslin that tears really easily just by touching it maybe it's very brittle um, it won't be very strong if it's a brand new piece of muslin you're probably going to be fine if it's a current bed sheet that has been laundered and you tore a piece from that it's probably going to be fine um, but um, this is, I like to use the tape with the fabric on top. I feel the safest, okay. And uh, so now we're going to decide how wide we want this. And let's see, do we even have one straight side on this? That would be so handy, probably not. But both sides kind of have the tearish, um, feathery, um, furry ends. Um, but I, I like that look. So I'm gonna leave that on that side. Let's see. And if we put this here, you'd have to come down here. You need to stay up there though. And then we would take you no closer or farther than here. Okay, so I'm going to need to start a little nip tuck there, a little snip, and then we tear. Okay, now I'm going to have a nice torn fabric edge on that side as well. Let's hope it didn't go too narrow on me and I still have enough. Cross fingers, cross fingers. Sometimes you never know with these things. I think I just made it. I think it's like really close, but I just made it. Okay, so now let's cut the bottom. It's going to be about here. Remember, it curls up a little bit, so maybe go a little longer than shorter. You know what I mean? You can always take off more. Okay, I think that's going to work beautifully. So at this point, I'm going to grab my Fabrifix glue, which I have transferred into something called a Sugar Bells icing piping bottle. Yes, this is it. This is it in all its glory. It just has a fine metal tip, which makes it very easy to um, apply thin uh, streams of the glue and uh, that makes it um, very convenient in uh, junk journaling and paper crafting. Um, you can certainly do it out of here, but you might just get a bigger um, gob coming out of the end. Uh, that's the official term, <laughs> if anybody wondered. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now apply the glue. And uh, there's many ways to do this, but I do random patterns, but I just wanna make sure I get close to the edges of what I need to cover. And then you can do different techniques. You can do the X followed by the great circle of life to get in all those areas. Now this is a, an area of great adherence requirement. So I'm gonna put a little extra glue. You know what I mean? A little extra glue. 
Um, don't be shy with the glue here. It might just take an uh, extra second or two to dry, but it's not a bad idea to have a little extra glue. Now, if you're using a thin muslin material, as I am, if I put that right on there, I might get some bleed through, even though this is a clear silicone glue, which normally doesn't have a lot of water content. So that's usually not a problem, but with um, large amounts of glue, it can be. You can also use PVC or, uh, or sorry, PVA, wet white glue, Elmer's glue, that kind of thing. That has a lot of water content. You're going to get a lot of bleed through. And if you're using a paper, it's going to wrinkle. Okay, but then the wrinkle will dry and sometimes it flattens out if you're lucky. I'm using the finger smoosh technique. I'm just spreading the glue. That's all this is. It's just spreading the glue. I find it the best tool to use. You do not have to use this. You can use a spatula or a, a crafting knife or something like that. And then we're going to place this down and you're going to have a second to rearrange if you have to and that's okay um, if you didn't get it perfectly down the first moment um, just try and stretch your north and your south and then try and go east and west spread it out spread it out spread it out okay use uh this is the hand iron we're just ironing it down getting it i guess it's actually a um a hand roller at this point. It's a brayer. It's a hand brayer. There you go. Okay, you can also use a brayer if you want, but not necessary. You can just use your hand. It's not that big of a deal, really. I See, I have a little curly up here. All I'm going to do is come in here and glue that down. That's right. I'm just going to come in over here with some like a little extra glue there, and I'm going to smoosh it to out. Yeah, see if I can get that to stay down. And if we have some uppies. Okay, so I need a little bit extra here because my material goes out farther than the um, tape where the glue was. So I'm adding the extra glue here so that now I'm just pressing it down. I'm not pushing it out so much because I don't want the glue on the, on the cover. I just want it um, on the material. So now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. There we go. Just feeding the glue along here. This is very fun and very relaxing. You're just kind of settling in with your book. This is a, a low stress uh, project because um, the cover is basically handled for you. Sometimes these inside pages are what you want or the insides of the covers are what you want and sometimes they're not. And you can change those. You can um, glue in a piece of paper here first and a piece of paper here first and then put this down. Um, I would put down your, your tape first, then the two pieces of paper and then your fabric on top of that to give uh, extra strength. And um, although it would still work if you just put all the paper down and uh, then your tape and then your fabric, that would also work. But that the other way is my preferred method. I think it just keep, makes the sandwich is a little bit stronger. Um, I don't have any factual evidence on that. It just feels like it is. Okay. Uh, all right, so we are carrying on here. Where are we? We have eight minutes, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to use our fingernail, a handy tool in crafting, and I'm just gonna kind of run where the natural book fold is, okay? This is going to make sure that the spine is glued down well and tight in that little area. I'm gonna look at the back, and I'm not gonna punch holes in this. I'm gonna retain the spine, and I'll show you how I do that. It's, it's a very simple method. I've, I've shown it on videos before, but I think with this particular book, I want this spine to stay pristine. Um, if you feel unsure at all, you can definitely sew right through the spines and that will give you a very secure um, grab with your uh, book pages inside to your spine so nothing will ever come apart. But uh, I've used another method that seems to have held up very well over the years, so I'm, I'm rolling with it <laughs> and I want to show it to you guys too. So um, especially anybody who's new who may have not seen the old videos that this, um, this might be worth uh, taking taken a peek at. Okay. All right. So that is pretty much uh, the ballpark of what we are covering uh, today that I just wanted to do this part with you. And um, um, I think then tomorrow what we will do is, uh, not tomorrow, um, you know, <laughs> whenever the next video comes out in this series of heartthrobs, um, making the making of a junk journal from an old book. Uh, the slow crafting process. I don't know, come up with a title in there somewhere. But uh, I just, this is a great time to also maybe get in touch with these pages again. Maybe I'm going to take this back page off so I can use it. Often the front and the back pages of any old book or any book actually, are, they're special. They generally have a different texture 
if you can see, let me zoom in really super close. They have a different texture. Can you see that? Oh, there you go. See, it has like an alligator texture compared to the smooth of the, the graphic page. I'll back you up a little bit so you can see what on earth I'm talking about here. Okay. This is the illustration page. It's a smooth and shiny. But then when you get into the actual part of the book, this book is uh, toasted caramel uh, porous rough. It has a completely different feel to it. So you're going to find that many pages in the book feel different. And it's interesting to take a little journey through the book that you have. A lot of the newer books, a lot of the pages will feel exactly the same all the way throughout. It's just a different process they had in making books, making books en masse, you know, um, uh, was a completely different process than what they used to do years ago. So this book had little, um, what I want to call these north and south little uh, fabric tails. I'm sure there's an official name for that. I know not what it is, the header and the footer. How about that? Head and tail, caudad, caudad cephalat, you name it, it's got names. But it's just a little piece of fabric that's folded in half and glued at the top to... Uh, give it a little a little hoo-ha specialness there and just notice that when they did it the width of it was only what the width of the actual book uh, block or the text block is the signatures block there's a specific name for this i can't really think exactly what it is i think it's text block although i also think this is text block so i'm probably thinking of the wrong word but i mean the pages you know what i mean the pages okay and here we go. So we could, we have enough of this where we could actually make that. So maybe we'll do that. We have a few extra minutes here. Let's play. Let's have some fun. Okay, we are going to make these. Now these are solid red. This is this color and that's just what it is. So I'm just going to use this. I have it here. It's going to be very easy to do. So the most important thing is you don't want to have your material wider than your spine. And you should assess your spine as it's closed Let's see. Yeah, you're pretty good, actually. This tail end of it seems to fit in there nicely. There's no overfolding. So let me cut off enough for two pieces, and then we'll just go ahead and glue those in there. And there's a million and one ways you can do this. You can get super fancy with this, or you can just do it a very simple, basic way. And this is just a very simple, basic way. But I just wanted to show you a couple fun, fun little uh, uh, things to think about as you go along. Little um, extras. Uh, that are easy for anybody, any beginner to do. Uh, you don't have to have special fancy tools. Um, it's just easy to work with. Okay, here we go. Yeah. All right. So I now officially have my first one. And I'm going to take this one. Now, what side? Maybe I'm going to have the colorful side up. I think that's kind of pretty. Oh, I put the colorful side down here. No, maybe then I'm going to do the other. I'm going to do the opposite and put the not-so-colorful side there. All right, that's what I'm going to do. So I am going to grab my Fabrifix glue yet again, and I'm going to put some down. Here we go. Now, there should be two places that I have to glue. The main part, okay, which is maybe a centimeter wide from edge to edge. I'm folding, I felt I folded this in half, nothing fancy, and I'm leaving the, um, the uh, wrong side of the fabric out just because I think it looks kind of cool, no other reason than that. And I'm just gonna trim off any excessive hairs, but I still want some furriness, I'm, I like the furry. And they're the same length, so I'm placing it down. And I'm gonna decide, looking at the back, how much do I want hanging out? Not that much. Okay, so I'm gonna maybe reduce that to about half. So this is just like a little tail. Just like a little that. That's what we got. Can you see that? Yeah, okay. Uh, just like a little something, you know what I mean? Now in here, remember this is not adhered. So I, w I need to come in here Put some glue in between these two pieces. You don't need a lot. It just could be a little bit here. And make sure that there's, it doesn't roll up on itself. It stays flat. You want this to stay flat. Okay. So there, we've got, we've completed the north one. We can double check because that's our title is upright. That we know that's the north one. Now we're going to rotate and do the south one. Same thing. No big deal. We have the extra fabric. It's right here. And it's an extra special little touch you can give to any junk journal that you're making to make it look like an old book. Okay, so I am going to, I know this one is about the same width, so it's going to fit. I'm going to put down about a centimeter's depth worth of glue that way. 
and then I'm going to fold this in half, having the wrong side out. And I guess I could, I could probably glue this here. Let's try it if we blew it before we put it down. How about that? All right, let's try that. Trying something new here. Just seeing how that goes. I'm gluing that together. Okay. And, oh, okay, I have a little thread I'm going to trim. Easier to trim now than later. Can still be done later, but it's nice if it's done now. And then I'm going to place. I know that's going to fit. I'm going to check. I haven't squashed placed. Okay, that's just nice. Okay, just maybe like an eighth of an inch over the edge. Barely there, but present. You know what I mean? It's definitely there. Nobody can ignore it. Nobody can say it's not there. It's definitely there. I'm just doing some extra trimming whilst I'm here. There we go. And there we have it. So let's look at the, this is our north one. Very nice, very nice. Here's our south, southern one, our southern hemisphere. I'm just doing a little adjusting while it's still wet to get them to match up evenly there we go there we go and now I'm just going to let this whole puppy dry and uh, then we'll come back and we'll start to address the next steps which are, are going to be a lot of fun we're going to be working on uh, paper selection page insertion um, signature creation you name it we're just going to take it slow step by step walk you through the process and create a journal together um, along the way or you're just going to uh, enjoy the ride and I'll do the work, no problem. Um, or maybe I'll pique your interest and you'll say, hey, today's my day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join the ranks. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna make my first journal out of an old book because uh, I think I can do this. And that's what I hope for. Um, but it's all good and no pressure. Okay, so from that point on, do you have anything else to say, Sunny? No, I'm asleep, Mom, please. Please, I've had my moment in the sun. Okay, okay, very good. Uh, he's fine. And um, for uh, thank you for everybody who is here. You have no idea how much it means to me, um, community-wise, friendship-wise, and uh, uh, connectivity-wise. It's so wonderful. I'm just so inspired that there's so many people out there who have a passion and a love for paper and love to hang around in kooky community circles of people making crazy things with paper and making books. So... Thank you for being you. You have no idea. Um, I thought I was alone. Um, okay, so um, for those who have been here, thank you. For those who are new, welcome. A grand welcome to you, to the Paper Outpost. Um, my videos, I publish them every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. And I've been, I think I've been publishing videos since, I want to say 2019, 20, 2019, 2020. No, it was definitely 2019. Yeah, I would have known if it was 2020. No, it was before that. Um, I have a podcast. Yes, it's called the Paper Outpost Podcast, The Joy of Junk Journals, and it comes out in audio form on all your major podcast platforms every Tuesday and Thursday. And who turned the heat up I here? Am I having a hot flash? Boy, is it getting hot in here? I've got the heater. Hang on, I have to, I have to unplug it. I'm sweating. <laughs> all right, back to, back to cooling off. Okay, it's not easy. <laughs> Okay, oh, okay. so the um, podcasts are audio and they're on the topics of junk journals, paper crafting, life of a crafter, and answering your craft, crafty questions. Sometimes I'll just open up the YouTube and uh, screen for questions and answer a whole batch all at once, so stay tuned for those. Um, also, in addition to the audio podcasts, which are always on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do have um, new video podcasts. What on earth is a video podcast, you say? I wondered the same thing too. I have no idea. I don't know what the difference between a video podcast and an audio podcast is other than you can see it and it looks a lot like a YouTube video. You know what I mean? But um, um, the company uh, that I have my podcast platform um, is uh, on is called uh, Anchor and they have Spotify bought them and Spotify wants to get into more videos so they were inviting some of us to come along and put some of our videos on their platform so on the other days and it's kind of random but I, what I'm doing is there's um uh, trying to get uh, other people who have maybe not come across my YouTube videos or maybe they're just not YouTube people but maybe they're big Spotify people or Instagram people I'll be putting some of my uh, older archival videos onto those in video podcast form which is basically a video okay <laughs> and uh so if you want to see the video uh, if you're going to be looking at my um episodes 
on Anchor and you see VP before at the beginning of the name of the title, that's video podcast. So if you want to watch it, you can watch that particular episode on Spotify or on Instagram or actually on YouTube because it originally came from YouTube. Okay. So there's that little doodad. Oh, um, I added something to my Amazon shop I wanted to tell you about. I, um, was reading a really good book recently that inspired me greatly in crafting. Um, doesn't actually have to do specifically with crafting, but a lot of the nuggets in it are applicable to crafting. So um, with my last podcast, I, I talked about it a little bit, and um, it was talking about things of um, the concept of small manageable bites with my morphism of the concept from that book. And um, it's called The Atomic... Uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I thought, oh, I, I've referenced the book. I should have a place where people can go take a look at the book if they're interested in it or if they want to find out more information about it or if they want to buy it. So I decided to put a link to it in my podcast. But then I thought, well, I should also put it in my Amazon shop so if people are, you know, uh, in on my YouTube channel, they can find, they can just go to my Amazon shop link and find it there. So long story short, there have been... Um, I get to, I don't know why I never thought of this before, but so many people ask me, um, what books do you use while, uh, in your crafting? And a lot of the books that I use are the Edith Holden books, the wildlife books, the field guides, um, bird books. I mean, you name it. I have a lot of books that I pull and draw from that I love. And I, I went through the journey of trying to save space. So I tore off all the covers and, and whence went, what went with those covers were the titles of the books and the authors of the books and all the publishing and all the information whoosh, over into the box of covers. So I had no idea what pictures came from which books. So when people are asking me, I'm, I was like, bah, bah, I don't know, I don't know. And, but then now I thought, what makes more perfect sense? Why not put a link to the actual books in my Amazon shop? Now, I do want to tell you that it, the Amazon links may or may not be the least expensive way to buy these books. Um, I want you guys to get good deals too. So definitely look for wherever you normally buy um, books. Let's say, for example, the Edith Holden books or the Wildlife books. Um, if you go online to some of the the regular uh, book uh, used book sellers sites like Thrift Books or Thrift USA Books, um, Better World Books. Um, Abe books. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there. Just start Googling and you'll, you'll find um, online bookstores, online used bookstores, and they'll give you like list of top 10 online used bookstores and you'll have a whole bunch to pick from. And you can go back and forth and um, scour to see where you can get the best deals. That's what I would recommend. Um, and, but if you just need the, the picture of the book or the title or the author, or maybe you just want to buy the book and don't want to look around, I'll put some links on in my Amazon shop for you there. Right now I'm putting that entire book section at the very bottom. So when you click on my Amazon shop, scroll all the way to the bottom. I think eventually I'll set up a separate uh, section just for books so they're easy to find. I put some of those sticker books that um, a lot of people like to use because they're quick and easy. The antiquarian style sticker type books. Um, there's some different versions of those. So I put some links into those for those as well. Um, and some of these will get bought up and then there won't be anything to buy there. And sometimes they will refill them or they will sell one, but they'll give you options of, um, maybe 42 that are used that you can click on and go to from there. Okay. And just so you know how that all works, if you do purchase anything through a link in my Amazon shop, I get paid a small amount for that to help my channel grow. Um, you don't pay more for the item because you use my link, just so you know that. Um, so that's kind of good to put out there. Um, what else? Um, oh, hey, I've got a newsletter and it's free. And you get a, um, it's a junk journal. It's a not a junk journal. It's the Paper Outpost pod, my podcast. It's my free monthly emailed newsletter where I send you a free digital image emailed to you every month. You can print it out at home, download it, save it, use it however you like in your artwork um, and have fun with it. And I'm also going to send you some junk journal tips and a note from the bookmaker which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it and you can print this out it's in word or pdf format on every newsletter at the bottom 
and you can make that your own or you can use it as is. Um, it's just there for your uh, uh, resource. I wanted you to have that as a resource. And also I have a list of junk journal supplies. Often people are wondering, especially when they're starting, what on earth should I be looking for? What should I grab? Should I grab this? Should I grab that? What about this? How about that? Do you need that? I need this. It's, you know, um, it, it's gonna help guide you as to uh, what things to keep your eyes open for. Some things are um, regular household items. Some things are from nature. Some things you buy at the store. You going to find a nice uh, a variety of fun things to keep your peepers open for and suddenly you will find that everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise coming to a mug near you yes <laughs> all right um also i've been yabbering on here haven't i um I sell vintage digi kits who knew who knew so if you're looking for pretty pictures that come together on a page they come in pa uh, packs of five five pages printed on lightweight cardstock all uh, correlated to different themes whether you like antiquarian or Victorian or birds or butterflies or dragonflies or um, celestial you know it's funny every time I go to say this list it's like I have I don't know 140 different I can't I can't remember what I have um, but oh I have colored themes ones so if you have um, if you like red or purple or uh, vanilla colors or uh, blue or green pink um, I have some themed on colors so that if uh, that's a great way to start if you're new uh, try making um, either eclectic that means anything goes in your junk journal or um, a colored theme because then it's very easy just to, to when you're rummaging through stuff and looking for stuff you're just grabbing everything blue you know what I mean just blue 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 and then you research blue pictures or or blue fabric from your closet or or you know your sister's blue hair no don't don't touch your sister's blue hair um uh, okay, so what else do we have? We have, along with the vintage digi kits, in my Etsy shop I also sell something called a fundal, and a fundal is a hundred pieces of antique, vintage, old papers, uh, ledgers, postcards, checks, receipts, also hand-dyed papers by me, I, I hand-dye papers, um, also interesting book pages, interesting things from days gone by. I'm going to have a beautiful collection to sit down and create from, and it should last you quite a while and be applicable to many different themes of junk journals. So uh, if it is not that easy for you to get out or you just don't feel like it and you'd rather have somebody do the legwork, I got you covered. Okay. Um, I have a bit of a, I love to collect stuff and I've been collecting old stuff for a long time. And um, um, I just, uh, want to share it with you guys. I think it's about time that it gets out there to other people's hands because uh, uh, I just can't make enough junk journals fast enough. So I'm, I'm leaving it up to you guys to make the junk journals to spread the word on these wonderful items. It is really wonderful to touch an old piece of uh, an old letter, an old piece of ledger, um, you know, an old postcard from the 1900s. Um, it's just it's, I don't know, it just, I just love that. Um, and I have a funny feeling that I'm not alone. <laughs> I also have an Amazon shop. I think I told you about that. And uh, I have a Facebook group. Hey, a nice, friendly, happy group of people getting together, sharing ideas. We um, do weekly and monthly challenges as well as, um, I like I love seeing what you guys make from these videos and the inspirations you get from them so I love to see what you post on there your pictures your stories your comments your ideas and uh, I'm so ever thankful to our wonderful group of um, six um, admin and moderators they have been doing a beautiful job of keeping our uh, Facebook group focused on task um, it's not easy it's so easy to go off on tangents on groups and there are many groups that cover many different things some do swaps some do uh, all sorts of different things but we try to stay very narrowly focused so when you come here you know what you're going to get it's going to be reliable it's going to be easy it's going to all be focused on creation 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 and uh, getting inspired from each other so um, I hope that helps and um, I hope you come on over and join us because we'd love to have you um, I, all my links are in the drop down description box below and if you're on your phone click on the title of the video and that should open up the drop down box to see all the description links links in the description box and remember if you find uh, value or or please if you find value or um, had some fun here please like subscribe and share and click the bell and I also have a merchandise store I mentioned a mug before yes I uh, have uh, the paper up with merchandise store has opened and I work in conjunction with a company called Teespring and um, I created some designs for t-shirts and mugs and uh, shopping totes and 
zipped hoodies and sweatshirts with uh, some of the things that you may hear me say occasionally, like create with reckless abandon and some other things. I'm going to be adding new things to it, so stay tuned all along. And remember, most of all, that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And, and if you want to create and continue with this slow reckless abandon, we'll see you when we see you next time for the next installment of Slow Crafting and Making a Junk Journal from an Old Book together. Thanks everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.